Good morning, everyone. because I am on my way to get my hair cut and yeah gotta wash this gray red out of my hair <laughs> anyways my grandkids are coming over for a little while because their dad had a doctor's appointment and yeah even though they live like an hour and 15 minutes south of us they go all the way up north another 20 miles from north from my house in order to get to a doctor anyways I will talk to all of you in just a little while well, one of the things that I did is I knew that my son and my grandkids were coming over. And so I really quickly decided that, you know what, I am going to change out the seasons. So what I did late last night is I pulled out all my fall stuff and I put away the few things that I had out that were typically, you know, summer stuff. And I just, I realized that, you know what? Some of this stuff is really kind of cute. I don't have a lot, but I thought maybe you would like to see what I did. So come along with me and I will show you how I decorated for fall. Well, I've been using this basket for my tomatoes because I still am getting a crop, not anymore. I think I'm gonna have to pull off the green ones and make some green relish. But I just had this really cheap, I've had it for years, I have two of them only, just a fall leaf. It's just vinyl that I had gotten, oh my gosh, years ago. So I just kind of put that in the center, changed out the napkin to a more fall looking napkin, and hey, there's a fall decoration. And the next thing I did is I got out my fall pillows. As you can see on my couch, I have a pumpkin and then a fall leaf, and I just kind of stuck them on the couch. And then this is a little glass pumpkin. It's a solid piece of glass. It wasn't very expensive, believe it or not. I got it at a pharmacy for $10 about three or four years ago. Really inexpensive. I, it might have been 15 but I don't think so. But it is hand-blown glass. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then over here, and like I said, most of the stuff I've had for years, this is just a little, a little ceramic candy dish. That's just a little candle with a little um, flower on it. It's more of the colors of fall than anything else. And then on this table, I went ahead and I put that little basket that I purchased yesterday with some gourds and that in it. And on top, I put those flowers. They're just fall colors like mums or just dried flowers. But these two little Indians here are precious moments that my mother had purchased for me. So I set them there, and then this little block right here that says, today, I am thankful for, and you use a piece of chalk, and you just write what you're thankful for. And so since I knew Luke and Nathan were coming, I went ahead and put their name on that. I just thought that was really cute. A young lady at our church made them and that's how I got that and then I just put the candles on there and then on our mantle I just put that little scarecrow and over here is just a little a little votive with a candle nothing special and down below is just a candle with some decorations and then on the counter next to the fireplace is another precious moment that my mother got me and it is an adorable little boy painting the leaves the fall colors. I just thought that he was adorable. Now the candle holder that's sitting behind it, I made at a woman's meeting. And all that is, is leaves and flowers hot glue gunned onto a CD. That's all that is. And then on this end table, I had received this little dish that just says, give thanks. Then near my front door, all I did was take this little glass basket 
and place a couple more of my little gourds and just some fall colored decorations and just kind of place that there and this is my front door wreath I've made this just collecting up little things through the years adding it to this adding it to that but I enjoy it I enjoy just you know getting things changed up and so this stuff will all stay up until it's time to decorate for you know what but I'm sorry that there really isn't a whole lot on this vlog except did you have you ever had one of those nights that you go to bed and no matter what you can't sleep oh you maybe sleep for 40 minutes and you wake up and you're thinking about this then you fall asleep and you sleep for another 30 minutes and you wake up and before you know it it's time to get up and collectively you probably only have three hours sleep yeah that was me last night it wasn't that I was worried about anything I just think it was a whole lot of nothing <laughs> But God is good and he got me through this day and I got to see my grandsons and that was just wonderful. Anyways, I will talk to all of you in just a little while. Today's devotion comes from Brenda at Maniac Gammy's Homestead. And our scripture verse for today is 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 5. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. This could be the motto of chaplains and many other pastoral ministries, but it is for all Christians. Paul calls God the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Here is a wonderful difference between Christianity and most other faiths. The God of the Bible is compassionate. The gods of many other faiths are like those in Paul's world, dispassionate and unconcerned. They merely demand obedience, submission, and worship. Our God is loving and compassionate. His desire for our submission comes from his compassion and love. To submit to him is to find the best path. For our lives. He comforts us in all of our troubles, no matter what we are enduring. We find that our Savior is there to encourage and direct us. Even when we are suffering because of our own sin, we find that he is there to comfort and guide us into victory. He encourages us to share that comfort with others who are in trouble. When we take the comfort God has given us and share it with the world, the verse that he used to encourage you, used to encourage others. That insight that blessed your soul, used to bless another person. God sovereignly arranges you to meet people who are going through things like you have experienced. We suffer for being Christians, for bearing his name, because our obedience causes us loss and abuse from the world. That is an overflow of the sufferings of Christ. We share in his sufferings because we endure things we would not endure if we were not obedient to him. In the same way, we share the comfort we receive by being in him. It is an overflow from the God of all comfort into our lives. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And remember to watch for opportunities to let his comfort overflow to you, overflow into the lives of those 
he brings into your life. God bless, and I will talk to you on Monday.